reading a story from my childhood memoir called uh, My Memoir. Uh, and the name of the story is At Mrs. Bell's. <clears throat> I grew up in a um, world where my father, John Howard Lawson, was a playwright, Broadway playwright in the 20s and 30s, experimental playwright. Uh, when uh, he uh, needed money, we'd take the train to California and spend some months or a year or two there uh, while he worked as a screenwriter. And then when he had built up a supply of money, we'd go back to New York and he'd continue to write plays. So I experienced uh, six times crossing the country and going back uh, round trip. Um, up into the later 30s and um, uh, after that he became a basically a full-time screenwriter. Uh, this <clears throat> story is called At Mrs. Bell's and it deals with that situation. I opened my eyes and looked around, wondering where I was. Then I remembered I was in my bedroom at Mrs. Bell's. My eyes traveled from the ceiling light down to the corner where my cardboard Pinocchio sat on a chair. Dressed in his white shirt and red pants and black shoes, he was the only thing familiar. What I didn't like was that he did remind me where I was. But suppose I wasn't really here, or suppose I was here, but it really wasn't me. Then I remembered the dream I had before I woke, the fear the emptiness came back. I'd been flying in the air and could fly, and suddenly I couldn't fly. I realized there was nothing under me and nothing to stop me from falling. Lying there with the fear in my head, I turned again towards my Pinocchio <coughs> to make me feel better. He was my friend, my only friend. Louise, one of the teachers who worked at Mrs. Bell's nursery school and also took care of me at times, helped me make him one day when I was sick and couldn't go to the grammar school down the street. She drew the parts on cardboard and cut them out the head with the long nose, the body, and the legs and arms. When the pieces were put together with cotter pins and painted, he not only looked like Pinocchio, but his arms and legs could move. We made the shirt and pants out of paper, and I painted his eyebrows, his eyes and mouth and shoes, and he looked real and was almost as tall as me. To, in a way, he wasn't <coughs> just my friend. He was me because the Pinocchio in the story had things about him like me. Still, I wasn't exactly like Pinocchio. I didn't run away from home like he did and I never wanted to be away from home. I was staying at Mrs. Bell's house because my mother wanted me to be close to a good school that I could walk to. Since our home was in the Hollywood Hills, 
it would save her from having to drive me long way down the hill to school every morning. Another difference between Pinocchio and me was that his father, Geppetto, loved him. He built a boat to try to find Pinocchio and save him. I knew my father wasn't like that, and maybe it was really his idea to put me here with, with Mrs. Bell, and my mother went along with it. Mrs. Bell was nice to me, but she was busy running her nursery school, and no matter how nice, she wasn't my mother, and her house wasn't my house. Louise wasn't my mother either. Elizabeth Farrago had been the one who told my parents about what a wonderful person Mrs. Bell was, and my mother accepted what Elizabeth said. I told my mother, I don't want to live with Mrs. Bell. She's a, been good enough to say she wants you there, and she is a wonderful person. Your father and I and Elizabeth have talked it over and think it's the best place for you. As we spoke about before, your father has become very political, creating the Screenwriters Guild and going to Washington, D.C. as the Guild's first president to campaign for writers' rights. He feels I should get involved in politics like he and Elizabeth. He thinks it will be best for me not to be a constant chauffeur driving back and forth to schools and other places. I still don't want to go to Mrs. Bell's house. Why can't I be at home like my sister? Because, honey, we want you to go to the best school and this will be best for you. Mandy is too young to be away from home. <clears throat> but you said it's because you don't want to drive me. That's only part of it. When my mother took me to my new home, Mrs. Bell smiled happily to see us and said, I'm so glad you're going to stay with us, Jeff. She took me to the bedroom, which was to be my room. I know you'll like being here with us and the school down the street is such a good school. Now, as I lay in bed in Mrs. Bell's house, looking at my Pinocchio, I felt like my parents didn't like me. I could understand it if my father really didn't like me. He never seemed interested in children but just in his work writing or reading. He liked to talk about ideas with friends like Doss and other writers. But why didn't my mother like me? She let Mandy stay at home. Didn't she have to be driven to school too? And if she was driving her, why couldn't she drive me? That same morning, after I had breakfast and was getting ready for school, the phone rang. Louise answered it and came into my room. She said, Jeff, your mother called and she is coming to get you because you're going back to New York. You aren't going to school today. It was hard to believe, but Louise said it was true. I was going back to my real home at Mastic Beach, Long Island. Soon I would be in our house and I could play with my friends, Charles and Arthur. We would have the whole 24 acres of woods and the creek to explore. We had secret hiding places out in the woods where nobody could find us. In a little while, my mother arrived all upset and frustrated, flustered as she could be when unexpected things happened. She put my clothes in my suitcase. Mrs. Bell, who had been in the back with the nursery school, came in and she and my mother hugged. I'm so sorry this has happened, my mother said. 
I know Jeff will miss you. We're, we've loved having him, and he's always welcome here at my home. We love Jeff. He is such a wonderful boy. You've been wonderful to care for him, Mrs. Bell. My mother hugged her again and wiped tears from her face. It really is so silly what happened. Jack, as you know, no, may know, can be very determined about political loyalties. His producer, Harry Cohn, insisted that all the employees contribute to the election campaign of the Republican Frank Miriam for governor. Jack doesn't really like Upton Sinclair much either, but he refused to contribute to Miriam's campaign. Cohn said to him, all right, Jack, but to please me and make it so the others don't think it unfair, give at least a dollar. Jack refused, and Cohn fired him. So here I am, and we are going back to Long Island. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Bell said, that Harry Cohn must be an awful person. Mrs. Bell hugged me, and as she told me how much she liked me and would miss me, I saw tears in her eyes. Then she went back to the nursery school. I went to my Pinocchio, then picked him up. Don't you think it would be nice if Jeff left the Pinocchio here for the nursery school children? Louise asked. That's a good idea, my mother said. No, I'm going to take him. I helped you make it, Jeff, and it would be nice for the little children to have him. They would like that. No, you are a big boy now, and you won't be wanting to play with just a cardboard Pinocchio, Louise said. In New York, you'll be out playing with your friends. I took hold of him and said loudly, he's mine, he's my Pinocchio. My mother said, but Jeff, Louise is right. You should leave it with the school for the little children. They will appreciate it, and you're getting beyond the stage where you will want something like that to play with. I won't leave him, I shouted. Don't be that way, honey. It's much better to share with the other children. I don't like to see you behave in a selfish manner, my mother said. You can't make me leave him, I screamed. I'm going to take him. My mother came towards me as if to take it away. I ran across the room. Get away from me, I hate you. Jeff, why are you so angry? Louise smiled. Let him have it, Sue. It obviously means something to him. It's okay. I feel embarrassed that you're behaving in such a silly way, Jeff. Why are you acting like that? I didn't answer. I just clutched my Pinocchio. Driving away from Mrs. Bell's, my mother said, I imagine you got so emotional about the Pinocchio because you're upset about being taken out of the third grade and being forced to cross the country again to start over in another school. Pinocchio is mine. I made him. He belongs to me. All right, honey. Hopefully we won't have to come back to California again. And I hope this time your father's theater career will work out better than it did with his last play. I do hope you understand that the changes we go through aren't really your father's fault, especially this time. <clears throat> Why didn't he pay the dollar, I asked. Your father has principles more than most men. He refuses to support the reactionaries. We should be proud of him for that. Mrs. Bell was right about Harry Cohn. 
he is an awful person. He was wrong to ma demand that Jack give money to support that reactionary for governor. Reactionaries are bad, aren't they? Yes, they are. I'm glad he got fired. You shouldn't say that, honey. It wasn't fun for your father. It was like having a rug pulled out from under him. What do you mean? Like having the ground taken out from under a person. So there is nothing to support them. You can understand that, can't you? Like flying in the air and then being able to fly and there is nothing under you and you fall and it's scary. It's interesting that you say that, Jeff. I suppose it's true, but it's maybe not that bad for your father in this case. It was bad for me. What do you mean? I had a dream like that. I was falling. I felt like nothing was under me. Dreams can be scary. What happened to your father is real. I knew I shouldn't like Cohen because he fired my father but he saved me from having to live at Mrs. Bell's and made it so I could go live in my own home again. I couldn't make myself hate him, even if he was a reactionary.